we are over 22,000 deaths reported in association with the, the vaccines. Now, I, I agree, that doesn't prove causation, but 30% of those deaths, Charlie, have occurred on days zero, one, or two. I'm alarmed by that. I'm concerned about that. I think it needs to be investigated, but the Fauci's of the world are just blowing it all off, the Biden administration. There's nothing to see here. And of course, we've heard story after story. I mean, all these athletes dropping dead on the, on the field, but we're supposed to ignore that. You know, nothing happening here, nothing to see. This is a travesty, this is a scandal. Ron Johnson is the dumbest in the Senate. He is so <laughs> dumb. Like, and I am I was born and raised in Wisconsin, and so he's particularly oh, really? embarrassing to me. Yeah, he's one of my parents' representatives. And the other senator is Tammy Baldwin. Like, what a <laughs> land of contrasts, you know? Like, she's yeah. one of the smartest people in the Senate, and he's literally the dumbest, and he's got some competition. I, I don't know what is, there's something wrong with him. Like, some, and I mean that, like, his brain is full of worms. Like, there is, Something wrong with Ron Johnson. And the fact that he is repeating these like message board caliber conspiracy theories kind of shows the extent to which misinformation and disinformation has made it all the way to the US Senate. Although the crowd represented a broad cross section of Americans, mostly working class by their appearance and manner of speech, some people stood out. A very few didn't share the jovial, friendly, earnest demeanor of the great majority. Some obviously didn't fit in. And he describes four different types of people, plainclothes militants, agents provocateurs, fake Trump protesters, and then disciplined uniform column of attackers. I think these are the people that uh, probably plan this. Now understand what he's doing there. He is pushing the, the conspiracy theory that the violence that broke out, the individuals who breached the Capitol and then proceeded to vandalize and, and threaten the lives of lawmakers, they weren't actually Trump supporters. They were actually agent provocateurs who used the Trump rally that preceded the riot as cover to carry out their acts of violence. I mean, it is absolute lunacy in the Senate. And he's proud of it. He's just repeating what was printed or published in the Federalist. We have the conspiracy theorists in Congress, guys. This isn't just about Newsmax or OAN. They're in Congress. There's more from that piece that I'll, I'll give you the details of. But Ryan, I wanted to give you a chance to jump in. Yeah, Ron Johnson is is a, a fascinating character, and you know the the most the most reactionary figures. In American history, have always been these. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to call them small business owners because it's an insult to small business owners. But it's these business people who are kind of handed uh, what what they have and have money just flowing in, and then have enough time on the side to be aggrieved by a bunch of uh, a bunch of different assaults from from whether it's their family. Or whether it's from the government, and and then to read read up on uh, different conspiracy theories, and then to continue to spiral further and further uh, to the right. And you've been you've been seeing this pattern from the like 1930s, like attempts to you know coup FDR up up until today. And Ron Johnson is just an absolute prototypical like perfect character of, of this of this genre. You know he. In the 1970s, when he when he got married, his his father-in-law is a plastics magnate in Wisconsin, and his father-in-law set up a brand new company and gave it to Ron Johnson and to his son, the two of them to run, and then made his plastics his giant plastics company the sole buyer of products from Ron Johnson's company. So from the 1970s until today. Ron Johnson has been, you know, has been running a company that had a guaranteed buyer, like a, a single payer, uh, so to speak. Wow. You know, he absolutely, you know, could not fail. When he ran for uh, Senate, he gave himself a loan of nine million dollars out of his own checking account. Right after he won, his company paid him ten million dollars, and when he was asked by the press. You know, how did you come up with that ten million dollar figure? He said, "Well, I agreed to it. That I came, I came up with it." And you know, he, he was he was pressed. There were all kinds of ethics questions because a a private company cannot fund a senator's campaign. And if 
you have this kind of weird marriage of like a $9 million personal loan that is instantly paid out by the company after the election of $10 million. So not only did he break even, he made a million dollars by, you know, by, by, becoming, by becoming a senator. And so he's had two terms now to continue to marinate in this in this uh, in this reactionary soup that that he's been raised in, and I don't know what it is about this kind of arrangement that that people have, but it creates kind of an insecurity and an anger and a bitterness, like be, because he knows, like he's not because he didn't like, earn it. He can, <laughs> he he can fool it. everybody else, but we we know, like anybody who Google's it knows. Yeah, you've spent the last fifty years just moving things from here. Over to your father-in-law and taking money out of the middle and getting rich, and so that you know you're selling a piece of your soul every time you do that, and and so people fill their souls then sometimes with with this with this bile, uh, with with this this these ideas these these bizarre like uber libertarian ideas, and so it's no surprise that the, that the most extreme Randian nut job in the Senate. Is a guy who's just been living off the welfare of his father-in-law for the last forty years, and probably had his company, if it, if it, you know, it, by by all appearances, pay for his pay for his his uh, Senate run. And we've always had these people, but now there's there's a lot more energy because there's so much more anger out there in the population. And so that's why that's how you can have somebody like him up on the dais. Just reading uh, Federalist conspiracies into the congressional record. It is incredible, and Randian is the right word to use. I mean, it, these are the kinds of people who think uh, they tell themselves all these pretty little lies about how you know they're just magical men and they're they're better than everyone else, and they just have these incredible abilities, and that's the reason why they're wealthy. But behind the scenes, they know they know your your daddy, your not even your real daddy, your father-in-law <laughs> had to set something up for you. Like it's so it's so sad and pathetic. And apparently, this is something that um, Senator Amy Klobuchar had expected. Because she said this, I knew Ron Johnson was going to be a problem. I'm not one bit surprised that he has again engaged in conspiracy theory. That's what he does. And by the way, that very same piece that he read excerpts from, I mean, it argues that the situation in the Capitol became violent because the Capitol Police overreacted to the crowd. The Capitol Police that was outmanned, the Capitol Police, which one of them was killed that day by these rioters. But no, it was the Capitol Police that overreacted and that's what led to all the violence that broke out. I mean, there's a reason why there's a sizable portion of Republican voters who are under the impression that the Capitol rioters were not actually Trump supporters, they were Antifa. Which is weird because you would think that, you know, Antifa rioters wouldn't be wearing garb that Trump sells for his campaign or, you know, the Camp Auschwitz hoodie, which there's something about that hoodie that is seared in my memory and I can never forget about it. Because this man, we'll talk about him a little later, just felt comfortable enough to celebrate Auschwitz on his hoodie. But no, I'm sure I'm sure that guy there is, you know, part of BLM. I'm sure that he's not a Trump supporter. I'm sure that he's not some right winger who showed up to the Capitol in an attempt to overthrow the government because he didn't like the outcome of the election.